Now on display, art that is nothing short of surreal. Serena Altschul shows us paintings bursting with fantasy images, inspired by the all too genuine horrors of war. Surrealist art is full of dreamlike images, but not all those dreams are sweet. This was not escapist art. It definitely was connected to the history that was taking place as they lived it. The work is part of a traveling exhibit called Monsters and Myths, currently at the Frist Art Museum in Nashville, after stopping at the Baltimore Museum of Art, where so Oliver Schell is a curator. In. This exhibition has 90 works, wow. including works on paper and oh, sculpture. How yeah. great. The show explores how the real-life monstrosities of war in the 1930s and 40s bred metaphorical monsters in paintings and sculptures. Monsters could be totalitarian leaders. They're also metaphors for those inner aspects where the propensity, again, for evil lurks. And it was hard to ignore the fact that Hitler in 1933 becomes chancellor and that the Spanish Civil War starts in 1936. So all these facts just keep building up and creating a sense of despair and horror amongst these artists. Artists like Spaniard Salvador Dali, who painted this just as his home country was on the brink of civil war. It grabs you when you walk in and see this. It's really, I have to say, scary. You know, and the monster is, it literally pulls itself apart, like the country is being pulled apart by civil war. Right. Or German-born Max Ernst, who fought in the trenches during World War I. He painted this piece over a period of time. He began it in France mm -hmm. in 1940, leaving Europe and arrives in New York in 1941. So he starts this project in the middle of the turmoil and chaos of yeah. almost not being able to leave Europe. Yes. Europe After the Rain II is supposed to be sort of about the wasteland of Europe. And the other side is, uh, to the west, is, is, the, the, is the American West. Like Ernst, many surrealists would become refugees, fleeing to America for safety. André Masson was another. Masson it was very direct in that he had a Jewish wife and two Jewish children, and he was on every list you'd want to not be on. And so these artists had to get out, and they bring their art with them. And sometimes that delays the finishing of the works, and it's part of the experience of what they went through. So you can feel the urgency in what they were going through. Certainly, yes. These works would become masterpieces of the surrealist art movement, a movement that pushed artists to explore the human psyche and challenge the viewer's imagination. It's interesting to get a sort of a different perspective on history. Um, we all know the story of World War II and America's military involvement, but artists are also living through these times and processing things on a different level. And so that's a fascinating way to look at history, too. Mm -hmm.